again, it's Cliff here from Down Under, carrying on with my video series, Work Holding Tips and Tricks. In this video, I'm going to go into uh, work holding using tabs, and also work holding parts and device using standoffs or packers. common way of holding certain shape part, parts is with tabs, that's little sections of stock remaining attached to the part and then you later saw it off, for example band saw it off or hack saw it off and uh, hand finish the little portion remaining. This suits certain types of work and is a, a very effective, you may have say three tabs holding the work in place while you do the majority of the machining. Work holding your material if it's thin like sheet metal poses some interesting challenges. I could machine opposite edges and hold this in the vise, um, but this is a little bit quicker because it's just a piece of rough stock so I'm clamping it down on some parallels. If it's any thinner than about two millimeters with that sort of span, rather than using parallels, you'd be better to clamp it down onto a piece of, you know, half inch plywood or something like that. Because the cutter will, depending on the span between the parallels, if there's too big a span, the cutter pressure will cause the sheet metal to flex down away from the cutter. This should be okay, I think, at three millimeters thick and about a hundred millimeter span. Uh, but it's best not to clamp down on uh, soft uh, sacrificial material if you can avoid it. Um, there's disadvantages with doing that. It clogs up the chips. You don't get as good a flushing. For setting the work offsets or the uh, work origins, the XYZ work origins, Pathpilot's got some pretty good probing functions here to quickly find the center of your work. I'll just set up the camera and show you that now. So I'm going to use this one and this one. Alright, we're showing that in action. So I've got a parallel here. I'm going to drop that down behind the back edge and uh, do this probing routine. Find Y center set work origin. So we touch off on that edge. Shift it round to the front. So now it's found the middle. Okay, now I'll set the uh, X. So I'm going to set that in about a similar distance. This isn't very critical, but you know, you can use this, this process for critical work. Um, I'm just showing it in principle. So we're going to set up on that side, shift the parallel over, set up on that side. Now we've got the X and Y coordinates set to zero and we'll set the Z which is over here. Probe Z set work origin. Now we've got the uh, work offset set on the X, Y and Z. Oh, I'm so busy talking, I'm not thinking about the job enough I didn't really have those parallels far enough apart to give safety clearance for the cutter coming through so I've just shifted them one at a time which meant that I didn't have to reset the work or the work origins. There we go, didn't take too long. 
I know some of you will be thinking, well, why didn't you just get it laser cut? You know, that would be cheaper and more efficient. And that's true. Uh, but for a one-off part, you've got to take into account the logistics of sending it away, paying the invoice, um, and the whole processing of it. Sometimes it's better just to spend an extra half an hour and do it less efficiently, uh, but on the spot in your own workshop. As you can see, this is a manually operated surface grinder that I've had for decades. Um, I think for most uh, small shops that aren't doing production surface grinding, that are only doing occasional surface grinding, this process is fine. You soon learn a rhythm of swinging the uh, longitudinal and cross traverse, and um, usually it's only a few minutes to surface grind your part, and there's little advantage in having the process automated with uh, motors on the slideways or hydraulics. Um, so I've always been really happy with this manual type of surface grinder. It's really excellent for this type of work because of the permanent magnet chuck. Um, grinding is parallel to the surface that is uh, cleaned up by grinding the, the permanent magnet chuck and then the top surface is exactly parallel to that. You're generating an accurate parallel surface. You're probably familiar with sets of parallels and you're probably familiar with one, two, three spacer blocks and it's a good idea to have a range of large and small pairs of these for different types of work holding applications. So these are like short fat parallels, they have different proportions and they have different very useful applications. So you can super glue these little one, two, three type blocks or parallels onto your vice jaws and that way it saves a lot of time setting up each part, especially useful if you're doing a production run of several parts. So if we add a retractable stop system on the side and a couple of parallels underneath, then we can just slide each part in, push in the retractable stop and remove it. Tighten up your vise. I'm doing this one-handed but you get the general idea. And then remove the parallels and then you have the work held clear of those setting gauges. Then once you've got that set up, all the parts can be placed in the same position. And we just need to set the first part Probe Z, set work origin, set it up uh, this way is a good way to do it because I've got machined edges there. Find center, set work origin. If you want to hold tapered work, then a pivoting parallel is very useful. I don't know whether you can buy these, but they're simple enough to make. You just drill and ream something like a half inch dowel hole in the middle of a block, and then you can saw it out and uh, fit, fit the dowel and, um, into this sort of shape, and you've then got a pivoting parallel. Well, it's not a parallel, is it? By definition, it's not parallel, but it's a pivoting uh, support block or pivoting clamp block for a vice or similar type of situation. It's just got 
a, a dowel mounted to one half and the remaining uh, hole from the dowel is your pivoting seat and then you just saw it away clearance to accommodate different angles. Thanks for watching guys, catch you next time, cheers.